when I was in the lupus clinic, I decided to get out of there. I decided to be well. Well, Linda, hi. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Red Hot Truth. It's so exciting having you on the show. So I want to start off by reading from the book called Healing Your Immune System Naturally. And I, when I read this paragraph, I thought, what a great way to start. And it says in chapter one, it says, it was 1987, sitting on the flat shower floor, water spraying on my head. I looked down at my hands and they are full of my hair. Something inside of me knows I'm very sick. I cry with fear, exhaustion and, lo and loneliness. There is no one to call out to. How am I going to get out of the shower? I have a son, a husband, a job, all that need me. How am I going to get well again? I know what it is like to be very healthy. So how did I let it get this far? Mm. And I thought that was such a poignant, 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 such a good <laughs> starting point because so many of us are going through life exhausted, mm. tired, rushed and stressed. And then we eventually crash and then we ask ourselves, how do we let it get this far? So how do you let it get that far? I think in the day I was going through it, um, a lot had to do with A, denial and B, ignorance. I think there was a lot of ignorance around what the body was going through. And if you got a cramp that that, I mean, <clears throat> in those days it was, you know, have a bit more salt. There was so much ignorance um, and I, and working so hard. And if I'm honest about it, it was, I was trying to prove um, who I was and that I was somebody. When you're one of seven children, you, you know, it's just, you're one of seven children. And so I wanted to be somebody from a little kid. I remember what, you know, listening to the radio and thinking I'm going to be a missionary. I'm going to be somebody that really makes some change in this world. And so I started doing a lot. <laughs> okay. And you have done a lot. <laughs> and I had a natural energy that I still probably have today. Not, not quite so much. <laughs> um, but it, it allowed me to think that I was invincible, you know. I could work for jobs and, and do it comfortably because I wanted to earn the money to go and take me places, etc. And so uh, I, I, I felt the little warnings and I ignored them because nobody ever taught me that those warnings were going to lead. It was like the universe giving you a little kick. Yeah. You, you don't pay attention to it, so the universe gives you a bigger kick. Yes. You still don't pay attention to it. I can do everything, I can do everything. Yes. And then one day you're hospitalized. So the body tells us something's up, yeah. right? And but yet we still keep going in this high energy, stressful situation and we self-medicate. What do we do? Coffee, overeat, Whatever we do. Well, thank heavens I didn't do the coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine your coffee. I mean, I, I can't really just spoke you. Um, how do we how do we pay attention to the signs now? Yeah, it, it's about understanding that there are signs first of all. So if you have a cramp, then that's a sign that you may like to take a bit more magnesium, calcium, etc. Um, or that, you know, what are you doing where the calcium magnesium that you're taking from your food isn't being absorbed? So what's happening with the gut? Because we could be doing everything right and the gut's not absorbing. So it's about, okay, what's going on with my gut or what's going on with my absorption? Um, and it's just about paying attention. If we get a sore neck, you know, am I angry? Because that's where the emotion of anger sits. You know, it's understanding the body. You're, you healed yourself, first of all, with the food. Yes. Now, whether you have lupus or not, um, food, as you mentioned, is a massive, massive, massive influence in our health. Mm. So how did you heal yourself with food? So the first thing I did actually was I detox. I learned what the word detox mean, because remember, we talked about inflammation, which is the basis of all disease. Detox allows you to detox the inflammation. 
So by detoxing, we can do that with um, really calming foods and lots of water and minerals. So I started to learn, and even though I was in the fitness industry becoming a trainer, I started to veer off. I was going to America and all over the place, teaching other people aqua fitness, and I was veering off into nutrition lectures because I wanted to learn more about the food and what we had to do. And, and it was wonderful. I learned about women's hormones. I learned about the need for water. And I'm thinking, do we really have to drink that stuff? Yeah, you didn't drink much water <laughs> I before. I know, when I was a kid, my mum wouldn't let us drink cordial and we couldn't drink Coke and stuff. So I thought, well, stuff it, I won't drink. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wondered why headaches and constipation was an, out, an outpouring of that, but anyway. So I learned to drink and um, when I came back into Australia and was put through the Tropical Diseases Centre, I was a pretty sick kid, um, they said to me, we need to get you onto hot water ah. because the temperature of the body is 34, the temperature inside is 38. So if we can drink warm or hot water, it goes in and assimilates really quickly. So I learned to drink boring hot water until I started to love it. Okay. And I drank a lot of it. So now, and then I realized by, by learning all this nutrition, I was uh, just a sponge for learning because I was really sick. I wanted to learn how I did, if I'm a representative tennis player, I was asked to go professional at one point. How could I get to that stage and now be in the bottom of a shower and I can't move? How, yes. what went on here? So I learned to put the minerals, the nutrition, lots of vegetables, lots and lots of vegetables and get the mineral content so we could calm down the inflammation. Yeah, and also here on page um, 110 in the book, you talk about, you know, the things that inflame our bodies um, and what we can, I remember, where was it in here? There was something about, was it dairy products caused quite a bit of inflammation? Can. Can. Absolutely, dairy and wheat were the two most allergic foods in the world. And sugar? And sugar is massive, it's a poison. Ah, and of course it. I've. <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> ah, here we go. It says here foods that must be avoided sugar and sugar containing foods, high superfruits, pack, packed and processed foods, yeast foods, alcohol, <laughs> condiments, <laughs> malt products, edible fun fungi that includes mushrooms. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, smoked meats, fruit juices, dried fruit. And when I read this list, what I f came up for me was all these things that you have mentioned mm. are promoted as healthy food. Mm. You know, you look at a cereal packet, you look at milk, you look at nuts, you like everything's like a five star rating. You know how they have their star rating now? But yeah, here you're saying these are not good foods. So how do we become aware of the marketing. I think what you I think what you've got to do. So I I learned about the antioxidant value of fruit. First of all, I lived on a farm, so everything ripens to the very end has more antioxidant than anything else. If you're if you're going to then ask me, you're going to say, Petra says, but I want my bananas green, so I don't have to keep going shopping, right? So you want greener bananas. You're getting bananas that don't have any antioxidant in them. Okay. So all of a sudden, we're eating foods that we demand that don't have the antioxidant in them that really they should have. So what are we getting from the food? Are we just filling up or not? Um, I've got a sweet tooth, my dad had a sweet tooth. When he came home on a Friday with that bar of chocolate, he was the most <laughs> handsome man on the planet. <laughs> I love you, give me the chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> One bar of chocolate between nine, it didn't oh, go very far, what? but it was still such a treat. So it, um, <clears throat> So I, I just learned, and also the other thing that teaches you is your body. Mm. If, my, if my stomach's out like this because I've eaten something, then I learned to say, okay, what did I just eat that would have encouraged that? And I'll go back and think of, was it bread? Then I went off bread because it's not gluten I'm allergic to, it's the yeast. Uh -huh. And I don't think people realize how much yeast is in so many things. Oh, of course. Like my mum put Vegemite under nearly everything full yeah. of yeast yes. or your melons we ate so many melons full of yeast okay you know and the breads yeah so that's why the wheat and the dairies are concerns for us humans um, simply because there are so many allergies especially to those two foods I went across to rice I started gagging 
That's not good. What's wrong with rice? Hair sample, I'm 98% allergic to rice. Wow. Isn't that interesting? And so really what I'm hearing you say is be conscious yes. when you eat, yes. how your body reacts. Yes. But because we're stressed, we're busy, mm. we eat on the run, we don't pay attention. Yes. And often women, like now, correct me if I'm wrong, and I'm just gas bagging here because this is what I think I know, right? But women don't generally develop fat around the stomach. Are we more pear people? Yeah, we're more, see, because the men develop it on the tummy and around their face. As yeah. they get older, men will show their fat here and here, yeah. which is not good because fat, this is brown fat. Brown fat around the belly is the worst fat you can have. You know, it, we need to do something about that. Women develop fat around what they call the childbearing areas. We we're built to have children up to the age of 83. Hey, stop <laughs> it. Linda, there's hope for you yet. Yeah. Yeah. But what I, what I was thinking, yeah, but that's exactly right. So when we do develop the yeah. stomach, that's not the way we design. So no. surely if you've got this bloatedness around you, you yes. know that's inflammation. And belly f and just everyone needs to know that belly fat is brown fat. Brown fat sits around organs and it's so dangerous. Sure. So when I um, was old enough to retire, which probably won't happen in my lifetime. Mm. Well, but when so I you have <laughs> children at 82. Like, <laughs> no, but when I was 65, I decided to say, I, you know, I'm going to get rid of the brown fat. And while I didn't really ever have that much, I thought, so I did this massive detox and I just got rid of the brown fat and yeah. I've put on a kilo in five years. So it really is good to just get rid of it. And you feel good. And feel, you feel you've got so much more energy. You're not yeah. lugging around this extra portion of brown fat that's really dangerous. It, it, you know, that though, this leads to diabetes, this leads to heart disease, you know, the, yes. the, your, the, your stomach weight and also the balding at the top of the head is another indicator of stress. So many of us are so used to feeling bad mm. that we've forgotten what it feels like to feel good because of the food we eat, the coffees and the yeah. sugars and stuff. And so we don't actually know what it feels like to feel different. Mm. So we think we are okay and that comes where the ignorance comes in again. But just recently um, I started paying attention to my body and I've changed to decaf coffee, ironically. But uh, the coffee, I, if I pay attention, I sweat, mm. my heart rate goes, I'm on, my adrenaline goes the whole day, that by the end of the day, I'm exhausted. Mm. Mm. Same as sugar, mm. right? I've just noticed that I feel mm. dead. Like mm. I have sugar, within half an hour I'm on the couch sleeping. Yep. It, it, like a really, I think since I turned 40, maybe then it really starts hitting me. And yes. it's maybe because I'm paying a bit more attention yes. to it now. absolutely. So pay attention, that's amazing. And we need to do that. And the other thing we need to do is, I don't believe we can get all the nutrition from the soil. I don't believe that as, as good as mum and dad were in growing our vegetables and, and, and us picking all everything so fresh and, and doing those things, what really damaged us was the chemicals. That was uh, one thing. Yes. But the other thing is I really believe we need to supplement. And so by not taking at least a calcium, magnesium, you know, I take a krill oil, you know, just some stuff that I know will lubricate the system um, yeah, it helps the bowel <laughs> remove, you know, and, and the, the elbows and the joints, you know. So, I mean, I've taken many of you here are in the personal development space or do your own personal development stuff. And in the personal development currently, and I'm not sure if you feel the same way, this is how I feel, is there's this fight against fear, mm. um, combat fear, grit and grind, feel positive, always, always positive, positive, positive. And it's almost like it's bastardized mm. feeling bad. Mm. It's made feeling bad really mm. um, a bad thing, really, mm. you know? And if you're feeling shit, then what's wrong with you? Because you should be doing this and this and this. And so I find, especially for myself as a positive person, mm. I suppress my emotions a lot. Mm. But that can make us so, Sick. Yes. Like it just sits in the mm. body. Mm. How did you deal with those emotions, unresolved emotions, to heal yourself from lupus? Well, I, I decided after I'd been through the fitness industry, became a trainer in that, went through the nutrition 
area, became a trainer in that. And then I, in the nutrition, when I was in the nutrition, I had a personal development person and that was Bob Proctor. And he came oh, in Bob. and I started to learn all of his material. I was dragged to his programs because I said to the guy, I'm the most positive person I know. Why do I need more personal development? Tony and that's so true. Like, I've got my shit together. I'm, clear. I'm positive, right? Look at me, I'm smiling. I've got some shit going on here, yeah. But I was sitting more and more forward. I just, and I, I went, oh my God, I'm going to teach this one day. I just loved it. And so then I learned between uh, Bob Proctor's programs and also NLP, Neuro Linguistic Programming, I learned about where emotions sit and that, the emotions, the heart is the centre of everything. So from the heart up, we store um, anger. And we can have, you know, sore shoulders, sore necks, sore everything, and yes. not realise that we've had anger up there for such a long time. It could be a person, could be a place, could be a thing, and we're not going to let it go. So we'll just store it, you know, up here. Or we can have um, sadness and grief, which is across the chest. That can develop into breast cancer, asthma, bronchitis, all those chest complaints. And it could be that we just literally didn't grieve somebody or didn't have time to yeah. let that person go. Or from the heart down in this area, this in the gut, which is where I had my problems, is fear. Mm. And so 97% of diseases stem from the gut. And so all of a sudden we've got all these emotions around this area. So if you look at the hips, that inability to move forward, the problem with storing emotions is that they're acidic. We talked about that. And we need to become alkaline if we want to be well. So by releasing the negative emotions, we're actually healing our body. Mostly after a, a people are coached, they'll say, I feel lighter. Yes. That's because that, that negative feeling is like, it's like wearing a backpack and you've got rocks or pebbles in your backpack, and I don't change anyone, but I undo the zip. <laughs> yeah, <And it's, laughs> you need a all hangout. <laughs> and it's your job to drop the rock or a pebble. It's your job to do that, right? And I want to share something with you guys there. Um, so I've got scoliosis, which is the curvature of my, of my back, and it curves to the left, right? So my shoulder protrudes, and it's sort of, I've got a very colourful skeleton, right? But it's it sort of pushed this bit out. And when my mother first noticed scoliosis was when I was about 10 and I was sitting in the garden and mum's like, what's happening with your shoulder there? And initially I just, like no one in my family has had scoliosis or anything. Um, and so that was really interesting. And it was only recently by working with Elena, who's been our guest on about sound vibrations and sound healing, that I was speaking to her about it. And she says, you know, that's just a pent up emotion, mm -hmm. right? That's just emotion mm -hmm. sitting there. And when I was reflecting on that, when that happened was that my mother had just entered into a relationship with a very abusive man. Mm -hmm. So domestic violence became part of my life. And so my body started, you know, reacting Contorting. that. Mm -hmm. And she says, look at your body, your body's doing this. Mm -hmm. It's shielding the heart. Mm -hmm. And what's happened is there's been such a buildup of bone here mm -hmm. that it's protecting the mm -hmm. heart. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, it's not, it's not a woe is me story, right? But it's a, I was bullied at school, mm -hmm. massively. So mm -hmm. I was bullied at school and bullied at home. And so I just created this armor for mm -hmm. myself. And, you know, wearing a back brace and everything just didn't help, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So what I'm working on now personally is releasing, as you mm -hmm. say, that anger, mm -hmm. letting go of that mm -hmm. resentment and that anger I have mainly towards my mother, really. Mm -hmm. And that's something I'm working on. And she saw me the other day, Lena, and she said, oh, you look so much better. I'm like, oh. Do I? Um, <laughs> of course I do. Um, and it's so interesting. So even though, you know, we do so much work on mindset mm -hmm. and keeping the mind intact, and the body doesn't lie. No, the body does the not lie. The only thing you can lie with is a smile. Totally, you right? Say, I'm feeling great. Oh, <laughs> actually, I'm real shit. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And how often does the mind lie to us? Like, the mind tricks us all the time, right? We lie. These stories we tell us. But if you really want to know what's going on with mm. you, check yeah. out the body. Check it. Yeah, check yeah. it out. And so 
how did you release those emotions? Well, what was the process you went through? Was it mainly through Well, I learned or? how to do it. Um, so I learned how to do it through, after I'd finished working with the Bob Proctor material, which allows you to understand the power of the mind. Um, and I, I, I'll always be grateful for Thruman Fleet, who said um, people don't understand the way to change a thought because they haven't got a picture of it. So he created a picture in 1934, and I've been using that ever since because all of a sudden it made sense. Uh -huh. And then I went, after I did a lot of work around the world with Bob Proctor, I wanted the next level of, that's me, where's the next level? So I went into NLP, and Neuro Linguistic Programming is about releasing the emotions and um, the emotions of what's a language as well and also but the emotional clearing is something that I just became very good at and became the clearing queen and just loved that ability because it was so important I saw the importance yeah and how that could save a person's health because I don't need asthma medication I was diagnosed with lupus Hashimoto's nephritis um, asthma <laughs> you name it. And I ended up going to the doctor and saying, I'm really sorry, but I don't think you can have this many diseases. <laughs> oh, I had no concept of it because I was a representative tennis player. How can you be this sick? Yeah. Well, I wasn't. I just had an autoimmune disease that I didn't know yeah. how to address. Now I know how to address. Let's rid the, the belly of the fear. Uh -huh. Yeah, let's release the emotions around fear. Is one of the ways you can release stuff breathing? Is the breathing a good strategy as well? I know, think? we use a, a program called Matrix Therapies, which yeah. is what I do nearly every day of the week and I just love it. There's also Dr. Mario Martinez did some work when he worked with the people in the blue zones and had a look at why people over 100 are well in some countries. And he looked at the emotion of shame. And he said, there's a lot of people who have shame in their life and to override shame you need honor so for the the people watching this just think of all the times you were honored close your eyes go back in time because that's what we do we have to go back in time because consciously you may not know this but subconsciously the subconscious mind knows everything it runs the blood through your body it grows your hair grows your fingernails so if you're in par with your subconscious mind it will help you find those times where you felt honored and just think of all the times you felt on it and only focus your attention on that. And it will override the shame. So now we can get rid of yes. some of this stuff by doing it every day. You see, how we got these emotions was be by, by pushing it down. We push it down with cigarettes, we push it down with alcohol, we push it down with food. We push it down because we don't want people to see us in a not so totally good way. I'd hide in my bedroom if I was unwell because I was always well. <laughs> And I understand because I've got this identity of having my ship together, right? Yeah. That's the identity I've created for myself in this world. That's, I don't know if other people see me that way, but that's how I see myself, yeah. right? And so the minute I'm not, I don't feel well, I don't, I, things are not going the way I want them to go, I, I hide, I yeah. withdraw, yeah. I totally, I just sink away. And so same thing, we all mm. have our strategies, right? Mm. And as you say, shame, massive mm. in women's lives, mm. experience it all the time, not good enough, rah, 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 you know how it spirals down. Mm. So it's really becoming conscious of those, mm. of those things and then working on what the opposite of that is and then going back. And that's a great NLP method which um, people can really contact you over. And yes, into, absolutely. Right? And you it's know? absolutely important to do it because limiting beliefs like I'm not good enough, I don't deserve, um, I have to do it by myself, no one yes. does it like me, you know, they're the number one limiting beliefs in the world. They're not just, totally. you know, don't think you own them. <laughs> and every... that's because we get, when, so this is always interesting to me, when a collective group of people feel yeah. the same way, it's programming. A hundred percent. It's, there is no fucking way in this world that all of us can think the same yeah. way. Yeah. No way. Mm -hmm. So understand when we do feel that way, and I'm saying this to myself as I'm saying it to all of you, is if you feel that way, it's not your own shit. Yeah. It's someone else's, bullshit that you repeat it yeah so let it go let it go and it is that easy yeah. let that it go. we we because we so practiced in the mm. thought it's not that easy mm. right um and so you were interviewed for the secret yes. because you healed yourself with lupus through your thoughts mm. and it was funny because i i re-watched it the other day because um i was preparing for this interview and i believe in the law of attraction i've really started working on that now um 
But for those of it, those people who don't know about the secret, tell us what it is. Well, basically the secret is that whatever you want, you can have. However, I think, you know, as great as the secret's been for a lot of people, um, for me, it's maybe left out a step. So the secret is about, like I wanted wellness, so I can have it. I have to have a, I, a four step though. I need to decide what I want. I believe I can have it. I go and act on that every day. And then the key is expectation. I expect it to be well. So I put a picture all around the house of me playing representative tennis because that's when I was the most well. And every day when I had lupus and I wasn't so well, I would say, what have I done today to get back to that? What have I done today to get back to that? Have I taken my minerals? Have I, you know, believed in good affirmations? Have I, have I you know, released whatever emotions coming up? Have I looked at my nutrition? So I, there's things that I needed to do. Act on it every day, act on it every day. And that's why I left the hospital and decided to do it myself naturally because I mm. wanted to act on it and then expect, I expected. And I was hitting the ball against the wall one day and the man said to me, we would like you to play master's tennis. Yeah. And I went, oh my gosh, I don't want to play master's tennis, but I've just reached my goal. I oh, right. That was my right. goal. So, well, be, so then, yes, the, so the beautiful thing about the secret is really what you think comes true, Absolutely. right? What your, your thoughts are your reality. So I really want to talk about the process, the four step process you just mentioned, so we can really help people align their thoughts mm. to get what they want, mm. right? So the first thing is decide. And oh, so often it's hard to decide. Like when we're not aligned with our red hot truth, we're comparing ourselves to other people. Mm. We think our desires are not good enough. We find it so hard to decide. So how did you decide to get well? So I put a picture of me everywhere and I remembered a time when I felt really well and that was playing representative tennis. So I put a picture of me all around the house because that's what he said. You, the, the subconscious mind needs a symbol and the, a picture is a great symbol yeah. and you need to be very, when you decide, you need to be very clear about what you want. So I wanted wellness. I wanted to be that person again that was playing representative tennis not necessarily to play, but to be that well. And um, so I just, every day, what have I done to get back to that? What have I done to get back to that? And also aligning your thoughts. Like that's when that's you said, right. affirmations are really important. What do you need to think to yeah. become that? So now I'm thinking about where I'm heading rather than that I don't feel good. Yes. You know, I'm thinking about, well, if I can continue with the nutrition, if I continue with, you know, um, the supplementations, if I continue with the great thoughts, I will get there. Yes, and you talk about believe, and yes. belief is just a repeat, a belief is just a repeat of thought. Well, to me, um, belief and action rotate. Okay. I believe they're stuck together. So for me, when I believe something, I act on it. When I act on it, I believe it. Yes. Right, so I remember being in China once and they asked me to do this massive thing with the earthquake. And I kept thinking, oh my God, I don't even speak a word of Chinese. How can I do that? But I believed I could and I acted on it. And I started to help 10 million people being displaced in China after an earthquake. Like who does that? So it's about understanding the process. If you really believe, so I believed I could get well, I got well because I acted on it. Mm. I went and bought the books that talked about uh, Julie Stafford, how she cured a husband of cancer. And if other people can do it, then I can do it. And I learned about nutrition and I, yeah. Yes. But I had the pictures all around the house, which was the expectation. Okay. What's the date I've got on getting back to that? And people say, I took you 14 years. I said, yeah, but I would have been dead if I hadn't done it. <laughs> right, what's you know? 14 years I in know. a lifetime? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that, they say, well, that's a, that's such a long time. Mm. It's such a long time. Yeah. And I think for a lot of people, they're fearful of, changing from some of the medical fraternity. But look, I worked with a hospital. I have a goal that the two hands of medicine will come together. So I'm not against doctors, it just it didn't suit me. And I wanted to be able to go to the doctor and have that voice where I was going to decide what I'm going to do and could you just support that yeah. with the tests. Yeah. I love that, like decide, believe, act and expect. Yeah. And they all sort of go hand in hand together. Yes. It's a great, um, process and you know 
on 144, you talk about those quite, you know, in quite a bit of detail as well. And you also say that making the decision to change is the biggest yes. step. It's not a wish. It can't be a wish. Yeah. I wish I could be well. It can't be a hope. It has it's to be, got a, to be a clear, irrevocable decision. decision. I today decide, like when I was in the lupus clinic, I decided to get out of there. I decided to be well and I decided. And, and my little boy hated anyone in a white coat because they kept putting me in hospital. So when I started to go to natural therapists, etc., and doing it naturally, I had to ask them, please don't wear a white coat. <laughs> and I would put him on the ground and I would look through the hole in the massage table and we'd play a game while they were working. I mean, I was dying. I felt terrible. He had no idea. Yeah. As far as he was concerned, we were playing a game. But, you know, I wanted to get well for him as well as me. Yes, yeah. and having a, like, having a reason to get well yeah. as well really yeah. helps, yeah. right? The why. Well, you, are, you are the example of, to your children, whether you like it or not. Totally. You're the example to the people around you. So if you don't want to do it for yourself, just think about Find someone else to yeah. do it for or yeah. something else to yeah. do it for. Totally. And yourself and, and others. And your dog. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone, remember the book. Healing your immune system naturally, so go and check it out. Linda, of course, you know, I did forget to ask you, how do we get hold of you? Okay, so the book is uh, not only on Amazon, but it's also, you can get it through me. If you look at the website, mindpowerglobal.com.au okay. and go to products, you'll see all the books there. And um, I'm sending them out every day, so if you want your beautiful hard copy, um, contact me. Or, or email me at Linda with a Y, L Y N D A at mindpowerglobal.com.au. <laughs> well, we'll put the links in the in the blog anyway. And my favourite, favourite, favourite question of all time is: What is your red hot truth, and how are you living it? My red hot truth is to get up every morning and only do the things you love. So if I do, I, would I love to come and do this show with you today? Absolutely. Yeah, right, so, sister. <laughs> <laughs> if you don't, get out. <laughs> um, would I love to teach NLP to some of these beautiful ladies tomorrow? Yeah, I can't wait. I can't, I'm going to go home this afternoon. I'm, going to, I'm doing the preparation. I've already told my sister this morning. That's what we're doing this afternoon. We prepare for what you love the next day. Does that make sense? And yes. also take some time out. And that's really important. So it's about loving you, but also what is it that you love and go and do it such profound words <laughs> and linda thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today hello fabulous woman on fire i trust that this interview helped you get closer to your red hot truth so give it a thumbs up remember to subscribe thank you for supporting the red hot truth and we'll see you next time